No, no que está No, no la que está everybody uh, it's Barry and Chloe of course here welcome to a new taste the world uh, video basically a playlist where we uh, travel the world in a budget-friendly way by staying in the house and cooking uh, famous recipes from around the world today what we're we making Chloe French onion soup are we actually gonna taste the world like I'm not gonna eat a globe we're gonna make a really wholesome soup which is loaded it's quite an intense deep soup right like the circus hey I don't know where she gets it from. Uh, and then we're going to serve it with a toasted cheesy loaded baguette on top, which is traditionally dunked in the middle. You can do that whilst it's baking at the same time, or you can bake it separately and stick it on the top. Do you do French at school? Yes. Un petit peu. Je m'appelle Chloe. Je suis anglaise. Je suis dix ans. Nous vais commencer le French onion soup recipe. Oui. Uh, no, it's went. Thanks. Very excited today because we get to use, as Mrs B and I call it, the blue turquoise funky dish thing. It's uh, the curry bowl. It's amazing. This is, I forget the name of this dish. It's basically a casserole dish with a lid. Hob proof, oven proof, all that stuff. You just shove it anywhere. I can shove it down my mouth. And the cool thing is, with Chloe helping, uh, we can kind of do some of the steps uh, without getting any heat on. And that is getting the onions ready with some oil in there. So apparently uh, yellow onions, brown onions, red onions, you can do that. So I decided to get a mix of uh, two different types, red and brown onions, which we are just going to peel in off the paper. Do you know what we've been doing instead of French at my school? What? Music. Oh, I thought they could have doubled up French and music. They could have done that. Petit Papa Noel. It's important that you sing French songs whilst doing this recipe. All right, onion, uh, we are just going to slice it into little strips like that, okay? And the reason I like doing it like that is you can then sort of, I mean, it'll do this as it cooks, but it'll just fall apart into these little sort of strands, straws of onion like that. You could do that, or there's a gadget for that. Cheers, mate. Onions! There we go. So we have got a huge bowl of onions chopped in all different sizes. Every little nook and cranny. Every nook and cranny, mate, yes. So this is some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, I mean this, not Chloe. Yes. I don't know where I went with that. Yeah, all the way around like that. Yes. I love caramelised onions. When I get a hot dog, right? Or a burger, you know, like from a stand or a stall? Yeah. The burger meat is okay, it's the caramelised onions. And that's what we're doing now, alright? Caramelised onions. Carefully stir so that the oil coats the onions, okay buddy? So once you're happy that it's all nice and glossy and shiny and coated evenly, yeah. we're going to get it on the heat, alright? <laughs> oh. And it looks quite loaded right now, doesn't it? But hopefully we're going to caramelise those onions, it's going to wilt down, right? Wilt down! But do keep stirring it, we're going to fry these up and I hope it, it does reduce down because there is a lot more going in there. That has been just over 10 minutes and it's softening up, it's smelling so good and it has shrunk down. A little bit of brown at the bottom of the pan that I'm scraping a little bit but we'll come on to that in a bit. But now to help it caramelise, we're going to stick in some sugar, nice, I'll have to mix that round, <laughs> and some butter, alright. Whenever I've done French recipes in the past or anything French themed, butter has been in there a lot. Yes. Now you're just like flicking it everywhere. But anyhow, we are going to cook that to the point where it starts to brown and char and properly caramelise now. So the first bit we're softening it, the sugar for that sweetness of the caramelisation. It smells so good. Alright, so that is two cloves of garlic there that Chloe is uh, chopping with the seesaw gadget. I think she got half it on her hands, but uh, that's cool. The smell of that. Oh, we've been frying these for about 25 minutes now. Looking good, right? The garlic's really enhanced it, but what we're going to do now is actually deglaze the pan. Apparently you can do this with this stock, or if you want to flavour it with wine. Do you like wine? No. Hmm. It's strong. Well, the alcohol content will simmer off, or you'll have a nice early night. <laughs> I've been told to use something called vermouth. Uh, it says vermouth on it, okay, extra dry. Daddy! Oh, a bit smoky. 
So it's basically like a, a more flavoured dry white wine apparently. So you could use wine or you could skip this step entirely by doing the stock, but it's going to add some more depth. We really should have skipped this step. No, we're not skipping it mate, we've got to do this. But I Aromatised wine. And it also, it's going to scrape up some flavour and some food particles, deglazing. Would you like me to pour it in? Yes please. In it goes. All the way. Look, see? I'm scraping up the food particles that were there before. Can you see how dirty it was, Chloe? Okay, yeah. getting, this is actually helping getting it clean. And all of that flavour is coming back up. Perfect. Oh, that sounds so calming. You're like... I really want to call it Vermouth, don't you? Vermouth. It should be... <laughs> Double O then. I quite like it now because now we can all just start calling our mouths moofs. My moof needs something to eat. Oh yeah, and we move on. We move on. Hey! Whilst that is simmering away, it's got a little bit more of that food in there, so it's okay for now. Before we add in the stock, what is that, Chloe? I think it's thyme. So what we've got is the obviously the stalks of the thyme. You could just chuck it straight in like that, but I don't want to be having to fish those out uh, towards the end. So. We've got Chloe doing a very fun job. Got her stripping the leaves off. Um, there are gadgets for that, but child labour. Two bay leaves, all right? I'll stick those in now. Boop, boop. Because they'll be easy to spot at the end. They should sort of hopefully float to the top. Fish it out, because you don't really want to eat a leaf. Don't leaf it in there. Yeah. There we go. Oh! All right, so let's stir this through. This is some beef stock going in. How does that smell? Mm. So we're just bringing this up to a simmer, then we can work on the bread. Le pan. La bread. This is lid cam. <laughs> on it goes. We have reached our destination. Thank you for flying lid airways. <laughs> That's going to simmer for about 25 minutes. Whilst it's doing that, I want you to uh, watch this step, okay? But what we're going to do, we're actually going to brush olive oil. Do you want to do that? Oh, yes, please. On here to help toast it. And then it goes to Cheese Town. By the way, I'm doing Cheese Town. You are not doing it because I am the queen of cheese. Excuse me, madame. Mm -hmm. Le oven is preheated. How much do you want? Just enough to gloss it. I guess you could use butter as well if you wanted. Or, or you could like rub some garlic clove on there. Turning French throughout this video. I'd love to go to Paris and go to the bakeries. Mrs B and I did actually go to Paris. We went to see a Robbie Williams concert years ago. And when we flew out there, we got a taxi straight into Paris and it was like all a bit crazy. Didn't know where we were going, trying to find a hotel. And we were just really hungry and stumbled down this side street into um, a random bakery that was just hidden from nowhere and had literally the best ham baguette ever. Please, can I go to Paris right now? We're making French onion soup, so that's... Compromise? No, it's on my bucket list. It's on your bucket list. Well, I think you'll be all right for a, you've got time on your side, all right? This is pan cam. Like double the pan, get it, Chloe? It's a double pan. Okay. Pan on a pan. Okay. So in this goes, we're just looking to use that oil to brown it. Soup is simmering away, smelling fantastic. We're toasting the other sides in the oven. Right here is two lots of cheese. We've got some Parmesan. And also here, there is a block of Gruyere cheese. Strong cheese. So there's two ways we can do this now, Chloe, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've got the amazing dish that goes anywhere, once the toast is done, we're about to turn it over, it's nearly brown. We're gonna put this mm -hmm. cheese on top. Yeah. So we can either do that and rebake it and then individually serve it into bowls, or you can also take the lid off, stick all the bread in, stick the cheese on, and then shove the whole thing in the oven to uh, melt the cheese that way. What would you prefer? What was the first option again? <laughs> I think we'll go with the first option, all right? As long as I get to sprinkle cheese and eat it, I'm fine. Though I've had a lot of cheese. You have. You have. <laughs> Surprise there's any left. So that was about six or so minutes in there. Look at that colour, mate. It's nice and toasted, but if we flip it over. Ooh! Ow! Are you feeling confident? You have to be very careful not to burn yourself, all right? Can I just sprinkle the cheese on now? That's what I'm trying to tell you. There we go. That is a lot of cheese on there, okay? Oh, and in that goes. Yeah, baby. The breads are out, smelling amazing. Golden brown on the top. Just taking the lid off, this is simmering down here like so. Smelling amazing. Let's serve it up. Oh my goodness, it looks amazing. All right, Chloe, stick that cheesy bread in there. Oh yes. <laughs> it looks a bit like just stuck on top. Should we submerge it a teeny bit? That, Chloe, 
Mm -hmm. is the cheapest way that I can send you to France. French onion soup. Nice. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. What do we do with the bread? Do you like dunk it in there? Like You can't eat soup with bread, right? Just push it down. So push it down to soften? Yeah. Yeah, because it would have firmed up like a crouton. Oh, those onions are really caramelised. You can really taste that. That's, yeah, there's like a real sort of rich depth flavour to it and the softness of the onions with the sweetness. Mm, that's really nice. Wow. Mm, I like that. I really like the cheesy bread. It's like pillowy. That's crispy outside. And the cheese. Oh! Cheese gives it that little kick, doesn't it? Oh, that's cooled down a little bit more now. There's like a slight sweetness to it as well. That caramelisation of the onions is like a real hub in that recipe. You wouldn't think it. It looks almost like like beyond savoury. Mm. Yeah. That is so good. Oh my gosh. It tastes like heaven. Heaven? <laughs> What's heaven in French? Heaven. Well, there we go, folks. Another Taste of the World video in the bag. Part of an epic playlist. Some really cool recipes on there. So do check them out. And, of course, suggest any other ones. Particularly if you're from another country from around the world. There was, is it Polish pierogies? I nearly did those today. Uh, loads of loads of different things we can do. So I'm trying to mi get a mix of savoury and sweet. But this was out of this world. And actually quite cheap. In fact, the most expensive item was the vermouth. So if you've got a bottle of, like, white wine or red wine. You want any red wine in the cupboard? Nah. Maybe mulled wine? <laughs> uh, you could probably use that instead or just bypass it if you want but as a soup go on mate get stuck in <laughs> absolute stonker play around with the stock cubes as well maybe make your own vegetable stock as well if you want to make it completely vegetarian give it a go and i'll see you next time cheers chloe cheers mate very french mate bye, bye. you're my souffle you're my big mac you're my lemon I'm cooking in love with you, girl. You're my garlic. You're my ketchup. You're my brownie. I'm cooking in love with you, girl. The moon.